Hey everybody. All right, we are on to part three of the uh, plaster repair. So uh, yeah, um, forgive the uh, dressy shirt. I'm in my work uniform and I really don't feel like changing. So uh, let's do some home construction. So what we got is uh, we are in the process of repairing the plaster and um, adhering it back to the lath underneath and um, first step was drilling a bunch of holes you can see that in part two part one was you know making sure that the uh, reasons that the past are that the plaster partially the reason that the plaster was cracking um, you can see all that in part one um, but this is part three so this is the gluing eyebrows yes so uh, what I have done is uh, my evil genius is to go through and use, well, drill a bunch of quarter inch holes, as you'll see in the other videos, um, and then use a product by Loctite called Power Grab. Works decently for it. Um, you probably use something else. I don't know. I don't care. I'm using Power Grab. So I bought a case of it and I found that I can do 70 holes with one tube. Now, don't get me wrong, it's all well and good, but uh, just like up in this region right here, I've got 40 holes, so it's gonna go through a chunk of this stuff. Uh, so far I've done two tubes, and I went through and I filled each one of these. And you can see where it's sticking out here because I have a series, and I'll probably pop these off now later, um, well, basically, I'm using ugly carpet as a backdrop. Yes, I'm barefoot. Ooh, toes. So, anyways, I'm using a series of washers, larger washers with smaller ones to fill in the hole so I can use an inch and a half drywall screw to dig into the lath. And then I coated it with tape so that the glue doesn't stick because the glue will not stick to the tape. Um, makes it beneficial so you don't have a bunch of washers all glued to your wall. So, um, I have stopped here. It cured for about three hours. It takes 24 to fully cure, but this is good enough to where it's not going to come back loose. And we're going to come through and we're going to start filling in all of these quarter inch holes. And so uh, we're going to have ooh, my lovely assistant, my kid. Hi. Hi, this is Robbie. So, and then there's Toby down there hiding behind the light. So, anywho. Um, I'm going to flip the camera around and we're going to see how this goes. One second. Hi, camera's flipped around. So we're going to go through and we're going to change over and, um, we're going to go down into this area where I stopped injecting the glue in because the goal is to inject it in, then screw it down. So I'm just going to give you a quick thing. Hold on to that, sir. Actually, we are going to go to super wide uh, extendo vision so you can actually see. And don't step in the light. That doesn't help. Okay, so you want your tip. See the tip? You want it smaller than the hole so that you're able to put into it or put it in. Uh, now, mind you, this is a super, super, super cheap, like $4 caught gun. Do yourself a favor. Buy the expensive one because this one sucks. All right, so we're gonna come in. And this is points where we have drilled in and hit the lath. So I'm gonna stick this in and we're gonna inject this glue in to the point that it starts squishing back out. See how we got a little bubble of this stuff squishing out? Okay, come on kiddo, get down in here. See this light coming from the side so that you can actually see in the hole. Hold on, let's go super zoom. Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Super zoom. All right, so we go in here. Now, focus. Hold on, let's see if we can get it to focus. It doesn't want to focus. All right, so, but I'm Wait, gonna- I can focus. You can focus? You can tap this. God, the kids are smart. So watch in this little hole as I start squirting in the glue. You'll see, oh, there it is coming back out and around. Now, what we don't realize is that it's doing this inside the wall to all the lath that's running horizontal in here. So I found about half a pump in each, fills it. Now, since this is not an auto stopping, I'm not gonna waste any of this adhesive, 
Uh, since this is not an auto stopping uh, or no drip nice caulk gun, I have to squeeze, feel the pressure, give it a second, and then right here, yep, ah, hit that. And uh, yeah, so before I do too much more of this, I'm gonna invest in a better uh, caulk gun because this just cuts into my productivity, hurts my hand, um, irritates me, and fills me full of rage, and nobody needs rage. All right, so we got another one where I kind of doubled up, where I almost hit the, I almost hit the uh, lath. I was a little low on this one. So I'm gonna go in this top hole. So got a good view, kid? Yep. Okay, so I'm gonna start squeezing in and we'll see it start coming back out and around. Now, and you do this all the way down. I'll save you in a second. We'll go back to the beginning to where we have glued on stuff or where we've already got the glue on and we grab our handy dandy impact driver. Let me zoom it out. Yes, please zoom it out. Maybe not all the way, but part of the way. Okay, you're in the middle. One okay, so now we're going to go back to the beginning. Where was the beginning? Right here. Now we're going to come in and we're going to start. Well, basically, I kind of run right around along the crack with these big ones. I have a series of progressively smaller washers. And now go ahead and get in here and we'll see. All right. That kind of, this helps kind of draw it in a little bit to suck the plaster in. Now I have a series of smaller washers and I had to use a, uh, an adapter to make it work. And I'll run down here to the edge of this and I'll suck it down in. And you can feel when it hits that lath, it starts digging in. Now watch this. See? You don't want to go too tight, but you want that proper amount of squishes because that's important. And I have even super, super small washers because, well, frankly, oh, I missed the lath. That's okay. That'll be part like 12 of the series. So, because obviously that's one of the spots I missed. I went too high. So let's go down low. Oh, there's the laugh. And then we can see it's squishing out right here. We don't want to go too tight because we don't want to strip it out. Now we're going to go through and we're going to progressively begin to pull all of the plaster and all of the lath. back out and use different size washers depending on where we're at and what we're doing and what we're going for. To pull this back out. And we let it set and I ran out of screws completely. So uh, I discussed about having these uh, plaster buttons that I hate. Well, you know what? I ran out of washers, so uh, there's going to come a time and place where I use these to even help hold things together. I'm just not going to actually like permanently use them and let them adhere because, well, frankly, they're garbage. So after I'm done, they're going to get thrown away and nobody's ever going to think of them again. But I'm going to continue to work my way along and once again, miss the laugh. That would be why there is a crack right here because it's running along where the lath is missing. So we gotta go up a little bit and that's okay. Ah, uh, that's a good one. Now, if you look at like this guy right here, this guy's sticking way out because that's how much gap there was for me to be able to fill in. So, uh, hold on. That is how we're going to fix the plaster, and that's how we are going to save the vintage feel and continue moving on without spending the god-awful price of the plaster repair kit that you can buy online that will do about as much area as I've done so far at about $130. I think I'm with 12 tubes of glue, which at 70 holes each, equals out to a whole lot, which I'm not feeling like even doing the math right now. Um, 
and then some washers and some drywall screws. Yeah, um, saving a decent amount of money and uh, hope you do too. Have a nice day.